Hello, amazing artists. It's Kelly Folsom here. And on today's podcast for Art Life Conversations, our topic is how to improve faster as an artist. This is going to be my top three tips, really my top three experiences and lessons um, myself and how, how I got to improve faster. Okay. Now there's, there's more tips to this, but I just wanted to pick a few that I feel like will really make a huge difference for you um, in improving um, your technical skills as an artist. So number one is to um, basically is to get around people that are better than you. Get around artists who are better skilled than you, right? Who are um, and learn from artists who have stronger skills than you. So for me, that is the first thing that I did is, is I started to insert myself into art classes. Even before I enrolled in art college, I was taking various art classes as I was traveling across the country at the time in, in different locations. And what was fascinating was there was a big variety in those art classes, okay? <laughs> and, um, and a lot of them were not the same quality of artists, right? Not the same level, um, at least not the level of artists that I wanted to be. And so some of them were really filled with a lot of, really kind of a lot of uh, more amateur artists, self-taught artists, hobby artists who really did not have a bigger vision for themselves as artists. And I was shocked by the amount of ego that would be in these kinds of art classes. Like, wow, you know, your skills are not really that good, but they were so... They were so superior in their attitude and they were not open to learning. They weren't open to um, getting critique or asking for feedback. It was like everybody was just kind of self-satisfied, right? And they like they had already arrived, <laughs> so to speak. And that is really like a fixed mindset. And so in those types of classes, because everybody was kind of like at this lower level and or maybe mediocre level at best um you know there was really no challenge for me and you know it's kind of like that analogy of the the bucket of crabs right like we've got a bucket of crabs and then one crab is trying to escape and the rest of the crabs are like dragging them down with them <laughs> so it's very hard to improve faster in those types of environments um, and also, if you're not in an environment like that at all, it's very hard to improve faster. Like if you're just trying to teach yourself and you don't really have a group of artists that um, you're around and learning from and just, you know, being around and participating with. So that would be the first thing. And, you know, I saw that pretty quickly early on and decided, like, I want to make sure that I insert myself into um, learning environments that will really challenge and grow me. And sometimes that is really hard to do because you might not be the best artist in the room. You know, you might actually be the weakest skilled artist in the room. And that is actually a good thing <laughs> because you can learn so much from the other artists who are around you. You can ask them questions, you can watch them, you know, um, you can get feedback from them, advice from them. Um, so that would be the, the first um, thing that I would recommend. And I even learned this in high school, for example, because um, I remember I always I loved school, you know, I still do. And I always had a real hunger to learn, a real hunger to learn and to grow. And I wanted to be smart. You know, I valued that in my life. I valued um, knowledge and intelligence and learn. I really, I valued learning and I still do, which is why I teach so much because I value learning so much. Um, and so in high school, um, I decided to sign up for, um, an honors class for, for trigonometry. And I had been like the top student in the geometry class to the point where I was, um, you know, I was tutoring other students in geometry 
um, to help them get their grades up. And, you know, that always feels great. It feels great to like be the best, right? <laughs> it feels great to be like, yeah, I'm so good at this. I'm so smart. And so, so an instructor encouraged me to sign up for the honors class for trigonometry. And I was scared. Um, I had struggled with algebra, um, mostly because of the school that I went to. We pretty much had to teach ourselves um, with booklets and videos, which I do not recommend trying to learn algebra that way. <laughs> um, and it, that's also a good example of why I am not a big fan of somebody trying to teach themselves, right? Because I had, I was such a, uh, had such a hunger for learning and the school that I happened to be placed in just was not a good level. There was not a good level of instruction there. And it really made me struggle. And it was very frustrating for me. And I know I, even now, like, gosh, I could have learned so much more. I could have gone faster. I could have been better if I'd actually been in a good learning environment. So anyway, so, and I learned that in trigonometry. And so I signed up for trigonometry, even though I was scared. Um, and I was not the best person in the class. You know, I was surrounded by really kind of these brainiacs who were so smart, so good at um, just catching on to these concepts. And, you know, I was struggling, you know, to to get it and struggling to learn. But man, I worked my butt off and I applied myself and I got help from um, tutoring from. So now I was the one being tutored. Right. Which was. Sometimes that's a little bit of a blow to the ego, especially whenever you climb so high in another area. So like that phrase says, you know, nothing fails like success. Sometimes it's difficult to let go of the thing that you already achieved top success in in order to grow in another area. And then to kind of be maybe in the middle or at the bottom and other people are better than you, right? Um, so sometimes it's easier, right? It's easier to, to do those easier things, to get that easy A, right? So I, you know, in that case, I knew like, oh, I know I'm going to get, it was the only class I think I had a B, my, I think I had a B minus in that class. And I had to work really, really hard to get that B minus, you know, and I knew like it's going to take my, my GPA down. And um, I didn't like that. I didn't like that it was going to take my GPA down, but I had done my absolute very best and I had grown so much, you know, um, as a person, as a young, young woman, uh, putting myself into that situation, challenging myself. Right. So so the first thing is to get around people who are better than you, who are more talented than you. Hopefully they're going to be people who are also going to be generous and not toxic. If they are, go find a different group, okay, because that's no good. <laughs> that's not going to support you, you know, so obviously there's some, um, some social dynamic dynamics there at play. So you do want to make sure that you're also in a nurturing environment as well, that, you know, they're going to want to nurture you and help you learn and help you get better. They want you to, to get as good as, as you can possibly get. Right. So that's the only caveat there with getting around people who are better than you just make sure that they, they want that it's not like a toxic environment, right? Because that's not nurturing. Um, so tip number two, kind of similar along those lines is to do hard things, right? Challenge yourself, stretch yourself. That is the only way that we can really keep growing and learning. You know, once we reach one level, how can I now stretch myself to another level, another level of skill, another level of understanding. How can I, maybe it's, you know, doing more, more complex paintings. Maybe it's doing bigger paintings, right? Um, maybe it is uh, diving in and trying those subject matters that, that really frighten you, that really scare you, and you're nervous about, you know, doing, doing it well. Um, when we stay in our comfort zone, for too long, you know, again, that just limits how fast we can improve. It limits how much we can grow. So doing hard things, doing new things, right? Like building new pathways in the brain, not just like resting on your laurels and staying in your comfort zone all the time. Um, so it might look like, for example, for me, like, um, 
the first thing that I really gained mastery in was like a uh, dramatic, you know, chiaroscuro still life. And so, you know, up above that still life, you could see more of a high key still life, right? And so those are ways that I would challenge myself would be like, okay, let's, let's really see if I can, you know, if I can really paint a high key still life, let's practice that. And it's not so much about seeing like, can I do it? It's really about what is there to be gained? What is there to be learned by trying this new thing? You know, I've pretty much painted every subject matter, painted and drawn every subject matter that you can, right? I've taken sculpture classes in my time as an artist, uh, both in the round and low relief. I've taken animal sculpture workshop, you know, with Sandy Scott. Um, so how can you like bring in some new things to challenge your artistic, you know, um, level of skill and also try some things that are in your wheelhouse, but more challenging, right? So if you're comfortable, like working on a certain size or a certain genre, a certain scale, like maybe it's just a matter of like increasing that size or increasing the complexity of the subject. And again, you have to make sure, you know, this is this is my advice based on my experience, but you do have to make sure that you understand what it is that you want out of being an artist. You know, if you just want to like, you know, kind of get to a certain level and stay there and enjoy yourself and be good at that, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? Like that is your choice. You get to decide that. So, you know, if you, if you're like, I really don't want to go to the next level, I really don't want to reach, you know, higher level of skill or mastery, whether it's in your art or your business, you know, that is your, you have that sovereign choice as a human being to decide that. Um, so just make sure that you're clear, like, what is it that I want and um, clear also of what you would have to do in order to get that thing that you say that you want and make sure that those two are not in conflict with one another. OK, so tip number three, and this is probably I would say for some people, they might think this is the hardest one. You could see it as the hardest one and the easiest one. <laughs> Um, because it's really just a matter of like showing up and doing the work. So my tip number three is just work your ass off, right? Like be disciplined, be devoted, um, show up and do the work. Um, there's a lot of, you know, myth, mythical, magical thinking out there about being an artist. And, you know, I know I myself also felt this way in the beginning, like, oh, I'm just not inspired. <laughs> you know? And what I quickly learned was like, I cannot wait for inspiration to strike. I cannot wait to feel inspired. Right. So that's that's a whole other topic, you know, talking about feelings. <laughs> um, feelings change can can change quite quickly. Right. Um, so one thing I learned was like, often once I started working, then I would actually start feeling inspired. Um, but you really do just have to show up and do the work. And in the beginning, it's it's much more challenging in the beginning because we are not satisfied with the results that we're getting, you know, and it's hard to deal with that. And so you do kind of, in a way, have to just like suck it up in the early days as an artist and go through that stage of development. Um, you know, it, as a beginner, that's just part of it. You're gonna be dealing with overwhelm. You're gonna be, you're gonna be frustrated, overwhelmed, indecisive, you know, not knowing exactly like what it is, what kind of artist that you wanna be and what exactly do you wanna create? Who do I study with? What kind of materials do I choose? What kind of painting style do I choose? And so sometimes, too, as a beginner, you might want to be rushing through that process. When you go, oh, I want to find my painting style. I want to find my artistic voice like now, you know. And so for me, I know it was really, you know, a couple of years of just like hunkered down, you know, training my mind and my nervous system, my arm to move the paintbrush, learning how to mix color, learning how to create form, learning how to apply the paint, even learning like, again, like what supplies suited me best. Did I, you know, I found out that I liked a speed drying medium with oil paint. And that's not the first supply that got handed to me in an art class, right? 
So you do have to kind of go through that stage where you're you're in discovery mode and you're also just in like, hey, I'm just trying to get the fundamentals here. Um, and it, usually your paintings are not very good at that stage and you're usually not going to be super satisfied with the results in that early stage as an artist, right? So you just have to keep showing up. Um, you know, we used to call it, Monty and I used to call it the dud stage. And we accepted and realized that for every 10 paintings that we did, one of them might be okay. <laughs> might be kind of at a mediocre level that we could feel better about or feel proud about. Um, so it's just, it's not all like, woo, you know, all the time um, as an artist. And again, it depends on what you want out of being an artist. So if you have higher standards um, that you're trying to attain and trying to reach to, you know, you're probably going to be less satisfied with those early results. Even harder sometimes is whenever we do get those inspiring, you know, bursts of energy and it feels so good. Or when we have those moments of, oh my gosh, it was, I can't believe I'm the one who painted that. Like those really kind of in, in the flow, outstanding paintings that sometimes do show up out of the blue and it does feel very much like it wasn't in your control, you know, and like the angels just like <laughs> touched you on, took your hand and painted that painting, you know. Sometimes it's really hard to come back from a painting like that and then come back to the easel and do do one that follows up, follows that one up. That's like, you know, terrible. <laughs> and you go, oh, I forgot how to paint, you know, and this sucks. And what happened? And I thought I had really reached a new level. And then I did a really crappy painting right after that. That is normal and natural. Um, it happens to all of us. It is part of the price of admission uh, when it comes to, to growing as an artist and improving as an artist. So the important thing there is to know like, yes, flukes are gonna happen. Um, flukes of like, whoa, this, this one was like 10 times past what I thought my ability was. And this one was 10 times worse than what I thought my ability was. Most of the work that you're going to create is going to be kind of somewhere in the middle, right? And that's kind of more indicative of where your skill set is actually at. Not the one that's, you know, the absolute worst and not the one that's like a fluke that is like, oh my gosh, 10 years, 10 years beyond where I'm at in my skill set, right? So trying to manage the emotional reactions um, and just staying focused on doing the work, right? So this is also why I talk often about focusing more on the process than on the finished product, than the finished outcome, the, the final result, right? So, so that's something too that you learn as an artist is, yeah, you know, if you're really going to grow is that, um, you know, it's better to really be focused on the process and the progress that you're making, the small the really small, the really slow incremental progress that you're making as an artist or in your art business, it's the same way in art business. The results are not always quick. And man, do we all want it quick, especially in today's time. So have patience, be patient and work your ass off, my friends. <laughs> like just show up, do the work, kind of turn all those those thoughts off in your brain, all those judgments, you know, and just show up to the easel and start painting, start sculpting, you know, whoever, whatever you do as an artist, start drawing, just get it done, get it done. Okay, my friends, I hope that this has been supportive um, for you. Again, I'd love to hear from you. want to hear like where you're at, what kind of artist you are, what you create, what kind of struggles you're facing, challenges, questions that you might have that I can support you with on this podcast. Simply, you can uh, let me know that by leaving a comment below. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, um, or you can email me at info at artlifewithkelly with an I.com. All right. Happy creating, everybody. And bye for now.